Hello, Lake Erie Council. I'm excited to be back with you on this lovely Tuesday. Uh, we are here for our Tiger Den meeting of the week. Uh, we have Miss Peggy with us back uh, and ready to have some fun. Uh, we are going to be doing our Tigerific adventure, having some fun, playing some games, learning about different types of games um, as we move along. Um, I don't know, I haven't seen you in a, a week or so. Uh, how are you doing, Miss Peggy? I'm doing pretty good, Miss Brittany. Yeah, I, I want to thank you for letting me volunteer to help out. I really enjoy it. Well, I'm glad you're on. Uh, we enjoy when you're on here with us too. So always have a good time. Now let's uh, let's uh, wait a few seconds while we are looking to see if anybody joins us today. Uh, but what are some of your favorite kind of games, Miss Peggy? Um. Hmm. I don't know. It varies. I mean, sometimes I like playing games on my computer. Mm -hmm. uh, th those can be a lot of fun. And then, I mean, sometimes I like playing board games with my family. I'm a big board game kind of person. And then my family's a little bit geeky. We have been known to play role playing games. Oh, okay. I yeah. learned some of those at camp when I uh, started when I was at summer camp. There's a lot of kids at camp that play uh, things like that, aren't there? Yeah, uh, it was fun. We good way to spend some of the downtime we had. Um, I'd love to see uh, in our comments where uh, uh, what kind of games our friends out in the internet world uh, like to do. Um, so if you have a favorite game, comment down below. I'd love to see that uh, and see if you're here. Give us a wave. Give us a hi. Um, just so we know uh, that we have some people uh, watching. So I think we're going to get started. So, Miss Peggy, are you up for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and the Scout Oath in Law? Sure. Okay, let me grab the flag one second and mute myself. Okay. Now, to do the Scout Oath in Law, we want to make sure we're all standing up. Am I up backward or am I not backward? Okay. I always forget. <laughs> it, it's a weekly quiz, right? <laughs> okay, we're going to stand up. Now, if you are in uniform like I am, you can do the scout salute. If you're, in, if you're not in uniform, it's your right hand over your heart. So, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Very good. And now we're going to do the scout oath and the scout law. And you're going to do your wolf ears really straight up and high because we're all short. And we're going to start with the scout oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, and to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. And now a scout law, now the scout law. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Okay, very good, everybody. Well, thank you, Miss Peggy. Uh, that's an awesome way to start our day. I'm just looking to see if we have any comments here on our Facebook post right now. Don't see anything, but we'll check back. But let's get started. So what we're going to be doing today it is play some games nice. play a couple games yeah so uh our, what we're doing is going to learn about different types of games whether they're individual their teams their initiative um we sometimes use other words to uh, uh describe initiative games um as an ex elective it provides opportunities to explore new things new games and to use your imagination because mm -hmm. do we have to play the games that are set forth 
for us, Miss Peggy, or can we use our imagination? Oh, no. When my kids were little, we made up games constantly. And you want to know a secret? I'd love to. I make up a lot of games right before my den meetings. Oh, Miss Peggy. But yeah. Or like if we're supposed to go outside and play and it's rainy, well, we can't go outside and play for our meeting, right? Mm -mm. So I have to like scramble and think of something. Okay. So you use your imagination, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So we're going to learn a little bit about creating our own games. Um, also, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, learning about willingness and the ability to work together and talk in a group, talk things out. If something doesn't work well the first time, maybe it's time to talk out and maybe change yep. one or two things and it'll work better. Yep. Uh, so our requirements for our venture we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna, number one, play at least two different games by yourself. So that's our first one, by playing games by yourself. And number two is play a board game or another inside game with one or more people. Number three is play a problem solving game. Number four is the, your den's permission, which we're not gonna really show this one. Um, the other ones we're gonna give examples and do a few things, but number four is um, you have to pick uh, four through six, one of those. Uh, and the fourth one is the video games. And uh, if you so choose and your parents let you do number four as a video game, then you can. Um, but we're gonna look at number five, which is uh, to invent a game or change the rules of a game that we already know to play in that game. Mm -hmm. And then number six is play a team game with your den. So uh, I, before I, I looked at this thing, these items and started looking, I was like, man, I didn't realize there were so many different types of games to play. Yeah. So uh, that was something I learned today. But um, I also have this uh, new uh, exciting uh, opening uh, that we could do real quick. Uh, I'll read it off. If you were in a group, and you're with your den, uh, you could each write a letter on the front and hold it down. So uh, say you have different people in your den, so you're going to write the letter on the front and then you'll write what the letter stands for on the back so you can read. So we're going to write A-M-E-R-I-C-A. -E what does that spell? A spell America, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if you were to be in a group, you could each get a letter and then write what the letter stands for on the back. So you stand up and when it's your turn, you go, A is for athletes who do their best. M is for muscle building, put us to the test. E is for exercise, building, putting us to the test. R is for running, just look, and then there, we're gone. I is for individuals who always try to achieve. C is for courage to do and believe. A is for active, and active will be, and we all at the end will say, how to live in America at the home of the free. So that is something you could try. So every time a letter comes up, the person would put up their letter, and then they would read it off. And then oh. again, they all say the last one. So that might be a fun uh, way to start your, um, your games off for the day. You know, one of the games that we like to play in my den is I have a beach ball that will blow up or a balloon. And we'll start at the beginning and we might say animals. And we start with the letter A. And you, when you hit the balloon, the first person would say like alligator. And then the next person that hits the balloon, they'd have to come up with an animal that starts with the letter B, like Ooh. bat. And then we see how far in the alphabet we can get. That sounds like without a fun letting thing. that ball hit the ground or without somebody freezing up and not being able to name something. something. So it makes you think fast, right? Oh, yes. On your feet. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Next time I'm outside, I might have to play that game. Uh, maybe when I'm at camp next time. Okay, so we've talked, we we're starting off on our individual games. So Miss Peggy, what is an individual, what kind of games can be individual? And what, what is an individual game? Well, individual games are, you can play, are games you can play by yourself, right? Yes. So they could be things like video games, mm -hmm. if you're allowed to play them. Um, they could be crossword puzzles, couldn't they? Yes, they could. They could be or regular puzzles. Or word find. Mm -hmm. All of those good puzzles. 
jigsaw okay. puzzles that would be a good individual game too mm -hmm. oh for sure i love the, i love all those ideas what about indoor bowling i know that you had an example you could do now oh. mm -hmm. okay well miss peggy sets that up i'll tell you a little bit about indoor bowling so indoor bowling you need a few things now miss peggy's going to do it miniaturized uh, but in, you could also do it with a little bigger. So you need six empty plastic water bottles, or she's going to use six uh, rubber eraser bits. I got these. They're the erasers that go on the end of your pencil. Mm -hmm. and I picked them up at Dollar Tree. Okay. And then you need masking tape and an indoor ball. You don't want a hard ball because uh, I don't think any of our parents would be happy if uh, the ball ended up through the window. Or broke something. Yep. So what you're going to do is you're going to line your six bottles up at the end of your hallway or one end of the room. Now we don't have a hallway, so she's going to use her mat. And you're going to put one bottle in the front, two in the next row, and three in the third row. So I'm creating a pyramid. A yes, triangle. exactly. You're using you're using your little characters to build a triangle. Now you you put you placed a piece of masking tape near the other end of the hallway or a living room as a starting line. So now you're going to grab uh, whatever ball, indoor ball you're using, and you can start uh, bowling. Let's see how many Miss Peggy gets the first try. Okay, ready? Go for it. Ooh, you got three. Hey, that would be three points, right? Yeah, three points. Let's see. Let's uh, go ahead and move out those three, and let's see if you can uh, get a Spare, is that what it is? It's spare if you- uh... yeah, It would be a spare. Ah, oh, so close. So close. So close. So that's a fun game uh, that you yeah. could play. I bet you could even play this game with somebody online like we're doing. Mm -hmm. I think Where so. You could set up your own little alley and we could take turns and see like who could get to 30 points first or something. Exactly. So it would be a great way to keep myself occupied all by myself. But, you know, if I'm able to do Zoom with a friend, you could play with a friend too. And then you can keep track. Um, and I bet you could go online if you wanted to play, um, you have find a score card or something that you could write your scores down. Yeah. It would be awesome. So that's a little bit of an indoor bowling that you could do with miniature or with full size bottles. Now, another one that you can play on your own would be a memory game. So you could use it with any kind of deck of cards. I happen to have a deck that's specifically for memory cards, with those memory cards. Uh, but you just shuffle them all up. You have to place them. So one, two, I'll just do four by two. Which, but you can do it as big or as little as your cards would say. Fletcher, and let me switch my screen. I will stop that video and then we'll start this video. And so I will flip my screen. Can you see that, Miss Peggy? Yep. Awesome. So, very tiny though. So the bit, the I'm getting the belt loop on the big part of my screen and what you're doing on the little part. Let me see real quick to make sure we're having a good visual on the Facebook. Let's see. So it's just, there we go. Well, we'll try this for a second. And if it doesn't work, I'll switch it. But okay, there I can see it on the Facebook. Okay. But I'm the other, other direction. So there we go. So I would basically just go through and I could play on my own. So that's G for gazelle and then T for tiger. So I didn't make a match. So I would put it back. Okay. I'm gonna have to remember, did I, now this is H for hippo. I didn't have anything that I could memorize and that's T for tiger. Hmm. Miss Peggy, do you remember? I, uh, I think I found T before, didn't I? I think so. Okay, was it here? Oh, no, I got a hippo, but oh, I remember I got a hippo before. So look at that, I made a match. 
So you can go back and work, uh, play and see if you can make matches on your own. Hey, do you know, I, I have another memory game that I just remembered. Awesome, let's hear it. Have you ever played Kim's game? I've not. Okay, so Kim's game, you have somebody set a bunch of stuff up like on a cookie sheet or just on the table and you cover it with a towel. Mm -hmm. And then you take the towel off and people have, and you only get like 10 seconds to look at everything. Mm -hmm. And then you put the cover back on and you have to name everything. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, like, see, I could, I could even do this right now. Are you ready? Sure, let's try it. Okay, so I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to look at everything on my screen. Ready? Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> okay, oh. Okie dokie. Okay, what can you remember? I can remember a cork. Yep, a cork. And vanilla. Vanilla. And a quarter. Mm, or was it a, a, it's a penny. penny? Okay, a penny. I really uh, couldn't quite tell what that one was. Uh, how about a those little marble, they're like clear marble things. Hurt awesome. Hmm. And then, hmm, what did I, what else did we have? There's only two more things. Oh, oh Tootsie Roll? A Tootsie Roll. Oh, and yeah, my favorite, the Andes. And the Andes Mint, very good. There we go. Oh, that's awesome. Man, that's a fun game. That was hard. It is hard. But that, that, that's a game that you could play with somebody else online. Man. Or your parent. Or your parent, yeah. So you just have your parents put them on a thing, on a tray and ask you to remember. You know, it's also, it can also be considered a uh, challenge or initiative game too. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm, how's that? Well, those games are, are to help you make you think a little bit differently. And sometimes they're good for team building. So you could have some of your den put something together and see which, which half of the den has a little bit better memory. You guys could work together to help each other remember stuff. That's fantastic. I like that. Um, so we've got lots of individual games you could play, but they can also be turned into uh, partner group games or team building games. So it looks like you can take one game and make just a little bit of changes and have mm -hmm. a whole new game. Okay, so let's move on to inside games. We've talked a little bit about this, but board games. So um, what would you consider an inside game? Um, well, when I was growing up, I liked to play Battleship sometimes. Ooh, I like Battleship. That sounds like fun. It is fun and all you need is a piece of paper. Really? Okay. Yeah. I think I have a piece of paper right here. So I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. And I did print this out, but you don't have to. Okay. You I have can. my plain piece of paper right here. Okay. So if you wanted to, that look right side up for you? Um, yes, you should be okay. Okay. So what you could do is you could create a graph, which okay. is... The, the, all of these squares, you could create a graph. Uh -huh. And the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out where you're gonna put your ships. Okay. So this one is a 10 by 10. So you have 10, square, 10 squares across the bottom and 10 squares up. Okay. So I've got my grid kind of, so I'm- And you put this on Google Classrooms though, right? I. I actually found one um, online. Mm -hmm. That's where I found this one. Yeah. So I've made my little chart. Okay, now what do I do? 
So now you have to decide where your ships are going to go. Okay. So, Miss Brittany. Yes. I, I, I need you to close your eyes and not listen. Okay. Because we're, we're going to figure out where we're going to put stuff. Okay. I'm not listening. So for our aircraft carrier, we get one, two, three, four spaces. So let's put it right here. And we color that in. And our battleship gets four spaces. I'm going to put that one here. One, two, three, four. And here's the cruiser. Uh oh. Well, one second, everybody. I think just we uh, looks like Miss Peggy might be frozen for a second, but just it should come back on just a minute. But so we were playing with our battleship and the battleship, she was just picking out where she was putting her uh, ships so that I could guess to see if I could sink her battleship. But while we wait for Miss Peggy to get back on, uh, let me, I will talk about another one so we can play the game when she gets back. So we're gonna talk a little bit about um, team games. So a team game is something you play with a group of people. So when there's a group of people, let me check that phone, uh, then you have a handful on this side and a handful on this side. So what, when you have team games, one team wins and one team loses. Uh, during games, you wanna make sure that you have uh, good, show good sportsmanship, which sportsmanship means that you play fairly and show respect for your team and the team that you play against. So uh, when anything you do, no matter what kind of games you're playing, uh, it's important to make sure that you show, sh show sportsmanship. Let's see. So uh, a little bit, there's some examples. Uh, go ahead and put in the comments below if you're there. Uh, one second. Um, different types of team games that you can play. So there's tons of different ones out there, uh, but uh, let's see if anybody may have some ideas about what kind of team games there are. Let's give it just a second to see. Well, I know that when I was in high school, I played, uh, I did track. So, but we, so sometimes track, it's a team sport, but um, we did relays together. But in middle school, I played basketball. So that was a, a fun activity um, that I played. So, and then there's other team sports that you don't even think about. There's a swim team, which you, everybody's swimming if it swimming together. Uh, and there, every, the different wins put points together, and that creates whoever wins and loses. So you want to make sure that there's always going to be a win, a winner and a loser for a team. However. <clears throat> um, when that is, you need, you need to win graciously, but you also have to lose graciously too. So that's an important thing to remember when it comes to games. So did you know that when you practice sportsmanship, you are living the Scout Law? Yeah, that's cool. You can literally tie this sportsmanship back to the Scout Law. So a Scout is courteous. Remember, it's how you play the game that counts. So if your team doesn't win, you still want to stay cheerful. If you do win, you want to be kind to the other players. 
You want to be a good sport. Awesome. So it looks like Ms. Peggy uh, had some sort of power outage uh, and the router, it has to reset and that's where she disappeared to. So we'll keep going on. At the end, of, so we just talked about, but at the end of the game, whether you win or lose, you want to say good game, offer a handshake, a high five, not right now. Uh, how about a, uh, maybe a, instead of a handshake or a high five in this game right now, maybe a good job. Pump it up, um, something to make it feel good and all around. It's about, it's a, remember it's, uh, it's a game, have, have fun. Awesome. So I'm looking, so let's see. So we talked about sports, teams, games, and we talked about, so tic-tac-toe. Uh, Tic-tac-toe is a game. One second, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, the power briefly blinked out, just enough to have to reset a router. Hey, you're back. That's what we just talked a little bit about. Uh, about team sports and the different okay. there are and about sportsmanship and about winning and losing graciously both. You know, sometimes it's harder to be a good winner than to be a good loser. Because mm -hmm. you know, you are so happy that you've won. All you wanna do is run around going, I won, I won, I won. Mm -hmm. But that could make other people feel sad and we don't wanna do that. No, that not at all, so. We want to enjoy our win, but we also don't want to uh, hurt somebody else in, in the process, right? Right. Awesome. So we were in the middle of uh, playing Battleship. Do you still have that available? Yep. Awesome. Let's Somewhere. See. There it is. Okay. So we figured out where our ships are going to go. And you figured out where your ships are going to go, right? Um, almost. I was almost. busy talking okay. to my screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay so while she's finishing doing that what what we then do is we'll take turns guessing and we'll have to use coordinates so i could say you know miss Brittany, do you have a ship at a one so we use the one down here and the a so it'd be this square right here now, if she has a ship there, she's going to say that she hit, so that we hit. If she doesn't have a ship there, she's going to say miss. Okay. I think I'm ready. Okay, Miss Brittany, do you have a ship at A1? Miss. Miss. So then we need to mark that it's been missed. And I have a sticker. I'm going to use the sticker. There we go. And now it's her turn. Okay. So how about F2? F2. Okay. So close your eyes for a second. We look at ours and we go one, two, and F. So we come up. Yeah. Miss. Okay, let's see. So I said F2. So that's you said F2. I'm okay, Miss Brittany. Do you have a ship at G5? I do not miss. Okay, okay, so. Do you have a ship at E10? Close your eyes. E and 10. So follow E. Miss. Aw, oh, man. We're either both really good or really bad at this. I know. Okay. Okay, Miss Brittany. Do you have a ship at E10? 
Miss. <laughs> We're really good at this game. Yeah. Well, it starts like this a lot anyway. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Let's see. Do you have one at D5? Let's see. D5. Nope. Miss. Okay. Do you have a ship at E2? Nope. B7. Did you say C or D? Uh, D. D is in dog? D is in dog. Okay, let's look. D7. Oh, she got us. Um, awesome. So now we have to mark that she's hit us there. Okay. Okay. So what do I have to do to win the game? To win the game, you have to sink everything on my on my chart here. Okay, so I have to sink everything. So I hit D7, but so I also have to hit the other part, portions of it yep. in order to sink the ship. So after you hit, you'd have to guess C7, D7, E and F7. Okay. And then I would tell you, you sunk my uh, aircraft carrier. Oh, your aircraft carrier. Or my battleship. Okay. Because there's four spaces there. So that would be my battleship. So you sink my battleship. Cool. And we'd go back and forth like that until we, uh, until whoever sank all the ships first. Awesome. So that's, a, that's a awesome. That's a fun game. I like that. We'll have to... That is a fun game. I liked playing that a lot when I was a kid. So we've got individual games and inside games. And then we've talked about team games. What about creating our own or adapting an old favorite? Is there any games that you like to do that with? How about tic-tac-toe? Ooh, that's an old favorite. Everybody loves to play tic-tac-toe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own tic-tac-toe board real fast. Ooh, that I sounds found, good. You know how you end up with all those lids but no containers? Uh, yeah, all the time. I, I found a lid with no container. <laughs> so I'm going to use that. So could you use a plate too? You can use a plate. Cool. So this is instead of using a bunch of papers and not being, it's a sturdy version, right? Yep, it's a little bit sturdier. And you can use it over and over. There we go. So we're thrifty too, right? Exactly. This is being thrifty. Nice. Plus, since I'm going to be using it over and over, I could even do things like get stickers. Ooh. And I could decorate it. <gasps> Ooh, that sounds like fun. I love stickers. Like. I think everybody knows that Miss Peggy has a snake by now. So uh, yeah. It's I'm an awesome gonna, snake. I'm, I'm going to put a snake sticker on it. So then I find stuff around the house to use as markers. I could use Tootsie Rolls. Ooh, I love Tootsie Rolls. Mm -hmm. And each person would get five Tootsie Rolls. And But the markers have to be different, right? So not all of us could use Tootsie Rolls. No, you have to have at least two different types, right? Yep. So here we have Andy's mints. Now, my family is kind of a geeky family. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of dice around the house. So I have six-sided dice. Okay. And then are you ready for this one? Yeah. Four-sided dice. Four-sided dice? Yeah, four-sided dice. Ooh, that's different. So you could use six-sided sided dice for one person and four-sided for the other, right? Yep. Okay. Um, you could even use pennies. But how would you make the pennies different? Uh, heads and tails? 
heads and tails. Um, and I also found these little glass beads to use. Ooh. So I could use anything on my tic-tac-toe board. Yeah. But we, were, but we were talking about tweaking it, right? Yeah. How so can we what if I added lines? More lines? More lines. You're going to change tic-tac-toe? Yeah. OK, let's see. So you know. Now this this tape I got at a uh, Dollar Tree too. Ah, uh, see, I do a lot of scout shopping at Dollar Tree. Me too. Nice. I love the sparkly script, but you could also use duct tape or masking tape or you can use anything. Anything really. Okay. Okay. How about this for a tic-tac-toe board, Miss Brittany? Ah, uh, geez, that's crazy. So you could start on one end and work your way. Nice. Okay. Two. See if you get three, four, five, six in a row. Six across. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a little more difficult. That would be a little bit more difficult. So you change it up and you can see if it gets a little too easy, you can always make it more difficult. Yep. Well, that's a fun way to change and alter a game. Um, and then uh, talk with the people who are playing and see if there's a, a, something you could change to make it harder or easier or a little different. It's always mm. good to, uh, what's the word? Um, be brief, right? Yep. Hey, have you ever played dots? I love that. Because that's what the belt loop is. Yes, it is. It is. I love playing it everywhere. You can literally make it when you're sitting out in the car or in an airport or in a bus or a doctor's office. Yeah. And all you have to do is put some dots and use some lines. All you got to do is put a whole bunch of dots on your paper. Mm -hmm. Each person gets to to pick a line, right? And then whoever makes the box, then you can put your initial in it. Mm -hmm. So I might go here, and then Miss Brittany, where do you want to put your line? Uh, the bottom. The bottom, up and down, or side to side? Uh, side to side. Okay, and then I'm gonna go here. Cool. And I'm going to go at the very top, right on yours. Other one. Yes. Side to side? Um, no, actually, yeah, right there. That one. Yeah. Okay. So we take turns, and eventually, we make a box. What are you going to, what, what, what's your move going to be, Miss Brittany? I'm going to finish that box off. You're going to finish that box? Mm hmm And then we put a B in the box. Now, the way I learned it, now you get another turn. I get another turn? Ooh. Yeah. Awesome. I'll take the one on the outside right below it. This one? Yeah. OK. Got it. It's constant. I don't want to go here because why? Because I can then close it up. Exactly. I'm going to go here. Awesome. That's a really simple game. And that's what our belt loop is. It's a game of dots. So you're putting things together to make a, a game, right? Mm -hmm. OK, let's see if I can spell. OK, so we now we've done that. What else do we have left to do? We've hit most games. Weren't you going to talk about, was it a skunk bag? Yes, those are, those are pretty fun. They so, are. A skunk bag is a game 
where you have to use your nose. Your nose? Your nose, yes. Okay. So you have to, you can match. So you get, you need some paper bags maybe. So you can't see what's in there. Okay. And a handful of them. And then you, in two bags, you put the same thing. Uh, you can put it on, a, take a little piece of sponge and put the smell on that in each one. Or if you don't have a sponge, you can wrap whatever it is in a paper towel so it doesn't permeate everything. Oh. In the bag, like this. And then you have to try and match the smells and try to identify the smell. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah. So, okay. So say that we have my, two, my three bags, four bags, whatever it is. Um, you probably want more than three or four because then you, it'd be a little too easy. Yeah. So, okay. If I, let me see if I can sniff. Okay, let's see. It's something kind of herby. Herby? Herby. Okay. It's not mint, I don't think. Hmm. Is it basil? Ooh. It might be basil. So let's see. No, this one smells too sweet. Kind of smells like um like syrup. Maple. Maybe maple. Maple syrup. syrup. Scout's own, no less. Uh, I think so. <laughs> what what other kind is there? There, there aren't any. Exactly. And this one, ooh, I think this one smells like the the syrup too. So that would mean, I think these Those are match. match. So it's as simple as that. Yeah, you, you told me about this and I brought ideas. Ooh. I have bay leaves. Because bay leaves have a, they have a really kind of, they have an herby smell. And uh, this will be a smell that's in a lot of soups and stuff. Oh, okay. And then, What is that, Miss Peggy? This one always reminds me of summer camp. Really? What? Hmm. Now, from when I was growing up, summer camp, because they would make cinnamon toast. Ooh, I do like cinnamon toast. And they had this machine that the bread would fall through and toast, mm -hmm. and they would have melted butter, and they'd flop the melted butter on it, and then they'd have like a big tray of cinnamon and sugar. Ooh. And they'd flop the buttered bread right on top of the cinnamon sugar. That smells. And so we'd get a big tray of cinnamon toast. Oh. So for me, when I smell cinnamon, I always think of summer camp from when I was a kid. Oh, that makes so much sense. So much. Do you sense. know that your, your, your nose, your, your sense of smell is actually really closely related to memory? Really? Yeah. And then another good smell that I like is vanilla. Ooh, that kind of is like um, when I was little, my great my grandma always had the sweet Finnish bread because uh, she has my, my some of the heritage is is, is from Finland, uh, my great grandparents, and uh, so it's a sweet bread with a with cardamom seed in it. Ooh. So it's very it's kind of distinctive and distinctive smell and taste. And then they put it, it was cardamom and then coffee sugar on the top glaze. Ooh, nice. And that smell always triggers what, you know, it's like, okay, that's what I smelled as a little child. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, that is true. True, true. We're just having. So that was a fun game. I'd love to hear what your, some of your guys' ideas are. Um, to make it a little different too, you put numbers, you can number them and say, oh, number one goes with number 10 or something like that. So you can have one, one with numbers and the other one with letters. Yeah, that's perfect. One with numbers, one with letters. There you go. See, you can adapt in different ways. So I think we've had, I've had a really great time today. I don't know about you, Miss Peggy. Me too. But uh, we've talked a lot about everything I could even think of, of different types of games. Um, you know, you got the problem solving initiative games, uh, which could be uh, 
trying to figure out how to keep everybody on. Um, it can be anything. So, you know, like having a, a, a bed sheet or a, a tablecloth, put your whole, everybody in your group on it and see if you can flip it without anybody falling off. That's a fun game. Mm -hmm. Or putting blindfolds on everybody and then number, giving everybody a number, and then they have to figure out how to get in line without talking. Ooh. That could be another fun problem solving initiative team building game. So uh, that would be a great game to play. But I think we've had a great time on our adventure. Uh, it's been a tigerific experience, I think. Um, but we'll finish off the day just going real quick over our takeaways and we'll head on out for the day. Our takeaways will be from trying individual versus team games, experience winning and losing, uh, developing sportsmanship, team building, using imagination and creating games, and a scout is kind. Whenever, even when we're playing a competitive game, we still want to be kind. Mm -hmm. So um, we'd love to hear your uh, uh, favorite games in the comments below. Uh, but we, we went over a lot of different, all of the requirements um, other than for um, A and B. Uh, but go ahead, take some time, play them, use whatever you have in your house um, and discuss. Take some videos and pictures because I want to see those games. Me too. Uh, I love that. You can comment below, um, show us some pictures, videos would be awesome. So we'll have a great evening. Tomorrow is our Bear Den meeting for forensics. I'm pretty excited about that one. So uh, hopefully we'll see some of you guys or if you have siblings or just want to take uh, time to watch a forensic den meeting. Uh, that'll be a fun, fun night. So have a wonderful night. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Uh, goodbye. Bye, guys.